angles and their measure. A ray or a half line or a half line starts at a point and extends indefinitely in one direction. So a ray is a half line. This one is a ray. Starts at one point and extends indefinitely in one direction. Now we have an angle has two rays with a common vertex. So, so an angle is one ray and another ray. It's two rays with a common vertex. Now, the vertex with a common point, which is called the vertex. The vertex is the, the vertex. And one arm is called initial arm or initial side. initial side and the other one is terminal side. Terminal side and this one is, is angle. Okay, so the situation is like this that I have an that, that I have an angle that which is formed by two rays. But two by two rays. I have an angle that is formed by two rays. I fix one arm or one side and I keep opening or rotating. I keep opening or rotating the other angle. That's why one arm is called one side is called initial side and the other that is opening is called the terminal side. And we can open in this direction or I can keep opening the other direction. I can I can keep I can keep op opening the, the angle the other direction. Okay, so we can have situation that one arm and the other arm, this would be the initial, and then I was opening up to this point. Okay, so this one is still initial side, and this one is terminal side. We can of course keep opening. The, usually, the, the initial side does not need to be horizontal. We used to keep it fixed so that we see, but it can be in other way too. So, a, a, another example of the angle might be that I start here. I keep opening. I I start here, and I keep opening, 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 and I come back go over one revolution and finish somewhere else. So it can be situation that I open, open and finish and finish more than one revolution. So it's always good to mark it's always good to mark the arc whether you open this way or whether you open the other way. So now if we keep opening the angle counterclockwise that means the angle has positive positive measure means positive angle for example for example initial arm this would be my angle let's say it's 60 degree angle okay positive angle can also be i go right here and i go up to some angle here let's say that this one is 300 angle Okay, positive angle, I keep opening, positive angle, I keep opening counterclockwise. I can go, I can go two revolutions and finish somewhere here. This would be, for example, 420 degree angle. Okay, as long as I opening counterclockwise, then the angle is positive. If I open clockwise, that means the angle would be negative. So from my initial arm, I'm going as the clock, so this would be my minus 60 degree angle. The negative measure means th the angle is open clockwise. So we can have that I keep opening 
that I keep opening in a negative direction. So I keep going until I finish somewhere here. So this angle is, for example, minus 3 and 10 degree angle. We will denote angles by lowercase Greek letters, such as alpha, beta, gamma, theta, and so on. If the angle is in rectangular coordinate system with its vertex at the origin, then we say that the angle is in standard position with the initial side on the x-axis. So now we place, we have the rectangular system and we place the angle with the vertex. So this one is my angle alpha. This one is my angle alpha. We place that the vertex is at the origin and the initial side is covered by the positive x axis. Okay? So we can have we can have we can have the angle like this and so on. So the angle can the terminal or uh, terminal side can land in any in any quadrant, in any part. Okay, those are those are angles in standard position. That the uh, vertex is at the origin, at and the initial side is positive x-axis. Now the rectangular coordinate system is divided into four quadrants and the quadrants are denoted like this and that's important to remember so this part is one quadrant first quadrant this part is my second quadrant and this one is my third quadrant and this one is my fourth quadrant those called the quadrants one, two, three, and fourth quadrant. Now, quadrat quad quadranto angle are angles with terminal side on the x axis or on the y on or on the y axis. For example, if I put my angle and I I will talk about this angle, what is this angle? The angles this the, the rays are perpendicular, so the angle has nothing else by 90 degree. This is a 90 degree angle. And if I keep opening, if I open up to this point, so I have 90 and 90, this one is my 180, 180 degree angle. And if I go even further, if I open up to here, this one it was 90 plus 90 is 180 plus another 90 gives me 180 plus 90 is 270. So this is 270 angle. And then if I open up to the end, I'm getting full revolution. So this one is 90, 180, 270 plus 90 is 360 degree angle. 360 degree angle. So now we would like to know how to draw certain angles. Keep in mind that 45 degree is half of the right angle. So we can draw that angle if we put this in standard position. We know that right here is 90 degree. So now we can take half, we can take half of this one and this angle, and this angle is 45 degree, 45 degree angle. It's very good to know how to draw certain types of angles 
roughly approximately okay now we have 60 degree is one third of 180 60 degree is one fourth of y 180 so if i play place in standard position here would be my 180 degree and now i divide this 180 into three parts into three parts okay so one of this part one third is 60 degree 60 degree and it needs to be a little bit more it is more than 45 it should be a little bit more than half of the angle and then 30 degree is half of that 60 degree so now if I cut it by half I'm getting 30 degree angle Here was 180, when I divide into, this would be 60, and now, so this one was 60 degree angle, and now half of that, half of that gives me 30 degree angle. And of course, it needs to be less than 45. 45 was half of this one, so that 45 angle would have been approximately right here in the middle. Okay, those are special types of angles, and it's good to keep in mind how to draw them. So now we would like to do example one. Draw each angle, and we have A. We would like to draw minus 60 degree angle minus 60 degree it opens clockwise so I go to coordinate system and if I keep opening this way I would get that this would be minus 90 if I open this way it would be minus 180 okay so now I divide this 180 into three parts one two and three and one of them is my 60 degree so going, this would be my minus 60 degree angle. B, we would like to draw angle of the measure 210. 210, positive. So I place the coordinate system. And I have 90 degree. 90 plus 90, 180. How much more from 180 gives me 210. How much more? So it's nothing else but 30 degree. This one is 180 plus 30 degree angle, right? Gives me 210. So 30 degree is less than half, so it's roughly, here would be 45, so it's roughly less than half. So this would be 210, 210 angle, okay? is 180 plus 30. See? We would like to draw angle 320 degree the same way. The same way we keep reasoning the same way. Coordinate system. 90 degree. 180. 180 plus another 90 gives me 270 degree. And if I go full revolution, it's 360 degree. So 360, so 320 is 360 less than 40 degree. Right? So we have 360 less than 40 degree. So we will not have whole 360, but we need to have less than 40 degree. So roughly half, roughly half of this one, right? Half would be 45, so it would be a little bit less. So roughly, this one is 320 degree. Okay, because this missing angle, because this angle is 40 degree, so it's half would be 45, it should be a little bit less. This angle is 40 degree. So that's why I am short of 40 degree angle. Okay, and D, we would like to draw minus 240 degree. Minus
minus 240 degree. So I need to go opposite way. I need to go opposite direction. If I go this way, here is minus 90. If I go this way, it would be minus 180. If I go this way, it's minus 270. Okay? So this one is minus 80 and another 60 degree. Another 60 gives me 240. So this one is minus 180, 180 and 60. I put minus in front. So 60 is more than 45, so it's right here. So this angle gives me minus 240 degree. Now we would like to talk about radians. Radians. First definition of a central angle. A central angle is a positive angle whose vertex is at the center of a circle. Whose vertex is at the center of the circle. So we draw the circle. We have the center of the circle. And then we have, this is called central angle central angle. So we have the radius, we have the initial arm, initial side, we have the terminal side, terminal side, and we have the arc, arc subtended by the angle, this arc between two rays. Okay. So we have that this one is arc subtended by the angle. In other words, is between two rays. Between two arms, between two sides of the angle. arc subtended by the angle arc subtended by the angle because if I have the angle like this I am subtending I am subtending this arc now we have definition of one radian one radian is the measure of a central angle when the radius of the circle is equal to the length of the arc subtended by the angle so the situation if I have If I had the circle, if I had the circle and this is my radius, this is my radius. Now I cut this string and pull it nicely right here as far as it gets. So that I take the string and place it on the circumference here. I place it on the circle. So as far as the this one goes, this this arc length is equal to the is equal to the radius. So I'm going to call that this is my theta. So theta radians. Abbreviation for radians is RAD. It's nothing else but the arc S over radius. Arc length stands for S. And R is the radi radius. And in order to have the uh, radians, they must get the same the same units. Must have must have the same units. Okay. So it's arc length over the radius. And we said that one radian was when the arc length is equal to the radius. So I take the arc length, I have the string, and now I place the string on the circle. So this, uh, the arc length is equal 
to the radius of the circle. Now, note that one revolution has arc length equal to the circumference of the circle because if I have the angle and I go one revolution okay, of the central angle I'm getting nothing else but the circumference right? so what is the circumference of the circle? the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r so now my theta radians was the arc length over the radius. Arc length is the circumference, so it's 2 pi r over the radius. My radius and radius cancel out, so that gives me 2 pi radians. So one revolution is 2 pi radians. One revolution is two pi radians, but one revolution is also how many degrees? It's 360 degree. One revolution is 360 degree, and at the same time is two pi radians. So 360 degree is nothing else but two pi. So we have that 360 degree is two pi radians. If I divide by half, half of that is 180. 180, half of that is just pi. 180 is pi radians. And half of that is 90 degree. And 90 degree would be half of the pi radians. That's good to keep in mind. Okay, that 360 degrees 360 degrees is 2 pi radians, 180 is pi radians, and the 90 degree is half pi, pi over 2 radians. And it comes from the definition, arc subtended by the angle over the radius. So arc of the whole revolution, is its circumference is 2 pi r over the radius. Now, we would like to be able to convert from degrees to radians and vice versa. So to convert from degrees to radians or vice versa, use proportions. For example, convert each angle to radians. And we have A, 45 degree. So we use proportions, we make proportions. On one side we put degree and on the other side we put radians. So we know that 180 degree is pi radians. Okay, and now we ask 45 degree. I don't know, so we put x. And that's my proportion, it's over, over. So I have 180 is x, 180 is pi, 45 is x. So I have the proportion and I can cross multiply to get this. So I have 180x is equal to 45 pi divided by 180 so x is equal to 45 pi over 180 this can be reduced, we can divide by 45, we can divide this by 45, divide the top by 45, divide the bottom by 45, so what we get, 1 pi or pi over 4. So it's good to keep in mind that 45 degree is pi over 4 radians. Or we can write that this 45 is nothing else but 1 fourth 
pi radians because pi is like over 1 so 1 pi and 4 times 1 that's exactly the same Now we have B. Let's check what is one degree. One degree. Convert to radians. As before, we know that 180 degree is pi radians. One degree. I don't know, so we put X. And that's my proportion. Degrees, radians. Now I can cross multiply, the degree, degree cancel out. I can cross multiply, so I have uh, 180x is equal to pi divided by x, so x is pi over 180 radians. So one degree is equal to pi over 180 radians. You can patch on calculator get approximation, but we want to keep like this. See? Minus 320 degree. Set up proportion. We know that 180 degree is pi. Now I'm asking minus 320 degree. I don't know. So it's my x, and that's my proportion. Cross multiply. 180x is equal to 320 pi divided by 180 so my x is equal to 320 pi divided by 180 we can reduce by 10 so the zero cancel out so we have 32 pi over 180 over 18 and we can reduce this even more. Certainly, we can reduce by 2. 32 divided by 2 is 16 pi. Probably more we can reduce. And then we have 18 divided by 2 gives me 9. And that's it. So 320 degree minus. We missed the minus. It's minus, 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 minus is 16 pi over 9. So minus 320 degree is minus 16 nine pi radians. Now we would like to convert from radians to degrees. We use the same proportion convert each angle to radians. We will use the same proportion. So we have A. Let's convert pi over 6 radians. We use the same proportion. 180 degree is my pi radians. Now, I don't know how many degrees is pi over 6 radians on one side radians on the other degrees okay so now we can cross multiply that I have x times pi is pi x is equal to 180 times 180 times pi over 6 so 180 is like 180 over 1 so I have pi x is equal to 180 pi over 6 180 and 6 reduces to 30. 180 and 6 reduces to 30. So I have that pi x is equal to 30 pi. Now I can divide by 30. Oh, I can divide by pi. I'm dividing by pi because I need to solve it for for x divide by pi divide by pi so then this pi and pi cancel out this pi and pi cancel out so my x is 30 degree so my x was pi over 6 radians so pi over 6 radians 
is nothing else but 30 degree. B. B. Let's check one radian. How many degree is that? So we set up a proportion. 180 degree is pi radians. And now I have one radian. I don't know how many it is, so it's how many degrees? It's my x. Okay? So I have x times pi is pi x is equal to 1 times 180 is 180. Divided by pi, divided by pi, so x is 180 over pi degrees. And I think it's good to, to check the approximation to roughly know what it is. So 180 divided by pi gives me roughly 57.29 nine, five, and seven, and it keeps going. So basically speaking, it's roughly 57 degrees. Okay, one radian is approximately 57 degree. So that's good to keep in mind. Let's do C. Let's do C. We would like to find 4 pi over 3 radians. Change to degree. So 180 de degree is pi radians. Now I have 3 pi over, sorry, 4 pi over 3 radians. I don't know how many degree it is. Okay, so that gives me the proportions. So uh, align degree with degree, radians with radians. Okay, so now we multiply x times pi is pi x is equal to 180, 180 times 4 pi over 3. Now, 180 is like 180 over 1 this times this, this times this. So I can reduce 180 and 3. I can reduce 180 divided by 3, gives me 60. Okay, so what I'm getting, pi x is equal to 60 times 4 is 240 and pi. Now we can divide by pi, divide by pi, this cancel out, this cancel out, so my x is 240 degrees. So what was my x? is 4 pi over 3. So 4 pi over 3 radians is 240 degree. One more example. So now we have, now we have CD, we have 5.7 radians. Procedure is the same, set up proportion. We know that 180 degree is pi radians. Now radians with radians, so 5.7 radians. I don't know. I put x. And that's my proportion. We can cross multiply. So I have pi x is equal to 180 times 5.7. So I have 180 times 5.7. So I have pi x is equal to 10 
1026. Now we need to divide by pi. Divide by pi. Let's cancel out. So my x is 1026 over pi. And that would be in degrees. So we can say that 5.7 radians is nothing else but 1026 over pi degrees. Or if they ask us to approximate, we can just punch on the calculator and we get that this is approximately 326.58594 and keeps going. So degrees, of course. So to two decimal places or to one decimal place depends what the question asks. So it would be 3226 to one decimal place. So I check one decimal and I look for the number after. If the number is greater than 5, I rise it. So 2.6 degree. If the number after your approximation is more than 5, 5 and more, we increase the number. If the number after your approximation is less than 5, then you keep the same. So we have 8. 8 is more than 5. It's going to be 6. So I get 326.6 degree. So 5.7 radians is approximately 326.6 degrees. And that concludes this part of the lecture. That, that concludes this lecture. Thank you.